Hello and welcome to Cornish Walking Trails. Today we're at Port 11. So in today's video I'm going to show you how I created a textile art piece of Port Leven. Port Leven is a fishing harbour on the south coast of Cornwall, near Helston, with a rich history of shipwrecks and smuggling. We've come here today to look for some sea plants. Sea glass is little pieces of glass that have ended up in the sea, say after a good night out in the beer bottle, accidentally ended up in the sea and smashed. After tumbling in the ocean for a couple of years, it washes up on our beaches, it's opaque and rounded and you can use it artistically, for jewellery, imaginatively. How would you use it? What do you do with it? I use it in pieces of art. down here on Paul Slevin Beach itself, beautiful waves rolling in and they tumble pebbles beautifully. Let's have a look down here. See, it's got some lovely fine rounded small pebbles and that's what this beach is mainly made up of but um, with that grinding action I don't think the glass even survives. sunlight just hits them as well. It's beautiful isn't it? The textures of this. It shimmers doesn't it? Quite a good place isn't it? To look behind a rock. Yeah. You <laughs> behind a rock and be surprised at what you find. You find a dog. <laughs> That's, good. That's what I was yeah. laughing at. There's lots of shiny little pebbles and it's incredibly smooth but it's not sea glass. And the law says you have to leave them behind doesn't it? Yeah. So we can't take those. They are so pretty though, aren't they? They look like sweeties. They do a bit, don't they? Find some. Where? <laughs> wow. So where did you find that? There may be more. I found it on the beach, Sarah. <laughs> Good heavens. Does that help? <laughs> I think of winter storms. Yeah. The ship. Yeah. And the Bickford Smith Institute. Yeah, I think that's probably the most iconic building here in Port Flevin, don't you? It is, isn't it? Looks I like a church, doesn't it? But it's never been a church. No, apparently it's built as a reading room. Yeah, by um, a philanthropist. <laughs> Yeah, lived at Trevano, called Bickford Smith, hence the name, isn't it? Made his fortune out of the um, uh, safety fuse. On the mining, yeah. 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 William Bickford Smith. Oh, well done you, yeah. 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 So this breakwater was the last of many attempts to protect Fourth Levens Harbour. 
on one side you've got harbour walls to protect the boats as they go through and on this side the sea still dominates this is where all the storms crash in in the winter creating some damage on, on the odd occasion for the Bixford Smith Institute when I was creating the art pieces I wanted to tell the story of how this strong wonderful breakwater topped by that little railing protects from the rolling waves for Slevin. Earlier this year we posted this photograph on Instagram it did quite well quite a few of you liked it so I've used this as my inspiration. For this project I will be using acrylics, fabric, embroidery threads and this stuff, this is Bondaweb, it's usually used in applique. So this is parchment paper sprayed with a layer of glue onto which I'm going to paint and then fuse it to the fabric. I don't want to overwhelm this video with the technique itself. For those who missed it, I'll put the St Michael's Mount Sea Glass Textile Project video, a link at the end of this video so you can catch up. <laughs> Fourth leaven is now dry, let's get it ironed onto the fabric. Now for the fun bit, let's see which little pieces of sea glass look best on this piece. I think that's quite effective, we've got a large piece here going to a smaller piece giving you a sense of scale just some gentle bits of green and blue these are quite rare these pieces I don't find many in these turquoisey colours so we've got this lovely brush stroke I'm going to use that just to put three pieces of sea glass there and emphasize that powerful incoming strength of the breaking wave I think they do just the job that you want them to do you they indicate that kind of glass-like quality of the water at that point it also adds to the perspective because it's pointing straight at the tan clock i think what we'll do is to use the richer colors these beautiful colors i can pick these out as we're going up the handrail towards the, the tan clock there Added a lot of stitching along the key sides that needs more work that's going to need more definition I'm going to bring in a lighter color to do the light mortar joints but the way the stitching has gone in there means that the railing now pops out put a lot of work into the rocks and I think the smaller stitches at the back make those recede and it gives you a bit of depth in the actual piece of work not so sure that I've chosen the right colour. I went with the sea glass colour rather than the paint colour. Might keep that under review and I might take that out. I'm here to do a bit more work on the Port Leaven project. I quite like that green flash in the wave. I might try a few other colours like that and see how that works. But tonight I'm going to concentrate on the actual wave itself and put some French knots in. I've been invaded. My new job, <laughs> cat removal services. <laughs> oh, bless her. Go give us a to me. So I'm now losing the light. I have 
done quite a lot of French knots along here. I don't even know if the camera can pick this up, but it's um, starting to look like that rushing wave. The last thing I want to do is put a stitch in that stops that power of the water. So I'm being really careful. Here is the finished product, framed, just picked it up from the framers. They do a lovely job. It's a handmade frame by someone that I go to inhale. It's an open frame, so you can actually touch the sea glass from Cornwall. Anyway, let's have a look at some of the detail. So we have the Bickford Smith Institute that dominates this little piece. And I particularly enjoyed putting in or alluding to the terrace of Victorian villas as it goes back towards the harbour. This is another area I so enjoy doing. I really enjoy putting the French knots in to represent that froth on the breaking wave and to give it that power, put little dashes of colour in threads and so love this green bit and it was a good decision to keep that there. The last thing I wanted was this rail to be dominant within the picture because it could have taken over and looked quite ugly. So I kept it quite muted and then decided at the last minute to put this splash of ruby red just to define that it is a man-made structure amongst all that is nature. I really enjoyed doing Port 11. In fact, I enjoyed it so much I ended up doing two. Do you want to see the other one as well? <laughs> So this is Port 11 at low tide and again you have the Bickford Smith Institute there at the beginning of the breakwater. Not so much emphasis on the breakwater this time. What I like about this one is the stillness of the water before this rushing wave comes in and kind of disturbs everything. It's low tide so you can see all the rocks and I try to pick out colours that reminded me of ice cream. So I've got like vanilla and latte and chocolate and mint. Oh, you know everything that would remind you of summer, even a bit of pistachio maybe. I've really enjoyed making these two pieces and I hope you've enjoyed watching the video too. Let me know what you do with your sea glass. If you are interested in maybe buying one of these, please check out my Etsy store, Cornish Walking Trails with no spaces on etsy.com. In the meantime, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.